Bremer. Put that 79 Yankee Bridge. Folks, Mill Spec Ops McGee here. Happy New Year. We're going to get this thing started off. It's going to be kind of a sit right light today uh, as it is a federal holiday. So without further ado, let's hop on over here to Skyglass. Uh, you can see not a lot up today, at least kicking off the day. Uh, is busier than normal for a federal holiday, but um, we are sitting right now at about uh, 51 mil aircraft up, 16 on screen. As you can see, like I said, pretty light. Most of them are heavy movers. I've uh, got one E6 here in the center. I'm not even going to bother showing uh, air refuelers because I don't track any right now that are up. And uh, my watch list, I got one. That's it right here. So Mr. Uh, Bagley 06 and uh, nothing to it. So let's get into the heavy lifts. Uh, this will kind of give us an idea of what's been happening. Then we'll get into some of the details, backtrack a little bit for the past 15 days. And uh, if my voice sounds a little bit uh, light, or scratchy, I apologize. I am getting over uh, some more crud. Uh, knocked me down for about three days. So anyway, nonetheless, let's get into the heavies. You see, this is the last 24-hour tracks. So we've got a couple items moving out to the West Coast and uh, a couple items moving on the East Coast. But for the most part, nothing really uh, up there um, in terms of the U.S. It is very light. And then we get over here to Europe, about the same, actually. And uh, you got something coming out of kind of the north there, headed down southbound. Looks to be a, a hungry C-17. And uh, then we got a little A-400 there that's going to be a British aircraft. Looks like it's headed over Bulgaria, maybe into Turkey. It is kind of high altitude. Uh, but that's going to be your heavies. No refuelers. Now let's get into the R-135s because this kind of tells a different story. This is the last 15 days. And uh, as you can see, uh, we left off. They were tracking some, something out over East Texas, over Longview. That's where the FBI team was dropped off and has not been picked up. We got one that left, went out towards, looks like Hawaii. We should pick that up on our screen here in a minute. You can see it landing. Uh, we just lost contact with it. Another one headed over towards Japan uh, that we seem to have lost. Now, I'm not showing anything from this side. We're going to come back to Japan in a minute because, remember, we had an incident there. Uh, with China just recently. And uh, you can see nothing really showing from that standpoint. But when we go over to Europe, it's kind of weird. It just kind of appears uh, from the other direction. And then we can see all the tracks. But right now, uh, there's nothing from that standpoint. Now, uh, like I said, it just shows one that drops off. We know we had one inbound that could have been coming back to the U.S. Uh, or outbound and just picked up right there. But let's take a look at Europe, and then we'll head over to Japan, China area. Uh, notice been beaten down a path there again next to Moldova and then up to the uh, uh, just well actually let me kind of rotate this a little bit to the right of uh, Belarus now there's talk that Belarus is getting into it that's north of that's out over the water north of Russia uh, so you can see we got eyes on a lot of stuff right now but that is why we're getting so much attention from these fighters you may remember over the Black Sea a couple months ago, we actually had a, a Su-23, uh, maybe it was, that fired a missile at an R-135. Of course, it wasn't locked on. It was just a warning shot. Uh, and then, of course, look, there we go, running up and down that area to the uh, south of Iran and then up near uh, Syria, watching stuff going on there, too. But, uh, but yeah, we go back to the incident that happened a couple months ago with Russia over the Black Sea with the R-135, same aircraft. And then, uh, again, here this appears. Now, this will give us a better look. You can see there's a track that shows that one coming from uh, Europe side of the house, which is kind of interesting. But uh, notice this one is down over South Korea. We got some stuff going on to the south of Japan. Uh, I don't know where that incident took place. Somewhere in there, uh, obviously, uh, following the track, somewhere around in here is where they ran into it. But, yeah, they were getting a closer look at North Korea, who's been making a lot of threats lately, uh, talking about increasing their nuke 
uh, capabilities, etc. Then, of course, China, we think, is about to make a move on Taiwan here uh, in the next 30. That's according to Forward Observer. Um, but we will continue to watch and see what happens. Now, this was the Chinese bird incident, if you uh, remember, that took place. Um, again, this just happened a couple of days ago. They say it flew within 20 feet of the aircraft. I will tell you, uh, that's probably an iPhone grabbing that. It's a lot closer than it looks. You can re reach out there and slap that wing. That's, uh, that's pretty close. And, of course, loaded to the gill. Um, but it's just a sign of force. You know, we do it to each other. We do it with the Russians. They do it to us. Uh, it is, uh, it's just a game that we play. Uh, but that's letting them know, hey, we're on to you. We know what you're doing. Remember that R-135 can track a soccer ball from uh, about 300 miles away. So, okay, back to the mini map here. But that'll just kind of give you a spin on what's going on from that standpoint. Now, let's take a look. Um, I, I will tell you, uh, I had a conversation brief with Greg Abbott uh, off the record. Um, he was at a luau. I was at a luau. And uh, I was shocked to see him there. So I just went up and introduced myself, started talking to him, immediately talked about tracking flights and the border. Um, and so let's take a look at the southern border. We're going to talk a bit uh, about it in the news here as well in just a second. Uh, but let me just show you what's been going on with Homeland Security. Uh, you're going to notice where the attention is um, as I kind of drill this down. Uh, it's interesting. Now, remember, Homeland Security, these are the feds, right? This is... Uh, Customs and Border Patrol notice a lot of work off the coast of Southern California, along the border of Southern California. And then we get into Texas over in the Del Rio area. Yeah, it's a fair amount of legwork. But uh, given the amount that we're having come across that region, you would think it would be a lot more. Let me back that down just a touch so you can see the lines a little better. And it kind of highlights. You can see it running along that area. You expect to see that. Um, but given the numbers I'm about to show you, you'd think it'd be a lot higher. Now, keep in mind, too, this is, um, you know, they're covering all over the place, right? Look at South Florida. Look at down south of the Keys, the amount of stuff that's going on down there. Remember, this is, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis land, right? So um, he's probably not getting a lot of help from these guys. But uh, I just want to point that one out. It's very, very active to Florida. Uh, a lot of stuff going on over D.C. And then notice this up here. What's going on on the northern border now that uh, these boys are making regular routes? I mean, that right there is out right along the border up there near uh, Lake Huron. Um, and then we get up into uh, just to the north of Spokane. And then up here again along the little border. Very light, really, considering. So let's talk Texas DPS. All right. Now. Look how busy these boys have been. This is going to be your state troopers, but do know Greg Abbott is utilizing these guys. I will tell you, uh, he is definitely working the resources that he can, uh, and he's probably going to be adding to it. But look at the amount of work back and forth. Now, keep in mind, this includes aircraft and helos, but that same area uh, is exponentially higher given state funds versus federal funds. Okay, Just a data point for you, but uh, something to pay very close attention to. Um, and again, right there along Brownsville, that's that general area. Uh, you can see a lot of, a lot of work along the border. So our state resources are being utilized pretty heavily, uh, right here in the corner there near El Paso, beating down a path, right? Texas DPS. Okay. So again, that's a data point for you. Uh, and we're going to get back into that here in just a minute, as I show you some of the information that has been gathered. Now let's take a look before we delve into, uh, the news side of it. Uh, let me show you here the civilian intel aspect. Now, when we left, we had this flight that was running out of Colorado out to um, Southern California. And then we get up here to this area in the Northeast. Just notice Kentucky again. Uh, I had someone tell me uh, that was pretty close to Fort Knox. So I don't know. I have to go look it up myself, but just a data point there. It'd be interesting. Um, remember, civilian intel, not military. Notice running routes, little man in the middle circle there, those sh long shoelaces, um, a lot of work over the D.C., Virginia area, all right? Okay, there is the civilian intel. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Remember, last 15 days, let's pop over to Europe, take a look at this as I back it up. This, beating down a path. Notice it's kind of bookend on uh, Kaliningrad and uh, right along that coastline of Belarus, 
all the way down to Ukraine. And then uh, we start looking at this in Hungary. We're going to take a closer look at that in just a second. That is an interesting data point, I think. All right. So Kaliningrad, right? That's Russia. And uh, we're eyes on. And then we run all the way up just to the to the uh, west side of St. Petersburg, Russia, along Belarus. And we get down, beating the daylights out of Moldova and that general area uh, out over to the Black Sea. Could be looking at stuff in Crimea in general along that way. Remember, that's uh, a pretty powerful reconnaissance bird. Now, this is where it gets interesting. What are we doing in Hungary? Um, where we are border to border looking at stuff. Croatia, Slovenia. Uh, remember Serbia? That's pro-Russia. Uh, they just got a bunch of uh, air, air defense systems from China. And uh, this, as we run a little more routes right there next to Bucharest. Uh, sorry, yeah, Bucharest. Uh, we got a lot of troops there, folks, and in Hungary. So why, what are they, <laughs> they're concerned about something. So we'll just keep eyes on this. Time will tell. They're definitely very interested in what's going on over there, okay? Now, we get back to the States. We look at Takamo. Remember, take charge, move out. This is a Navy bird, ICBM communicator, command bird uh, that talks to your subs, launch codes, et cetera, uh, over the Gulf, off the West Coast off the East Coast, about where you expect to see them, really, but been very busy the last 15 days off of Florida. When we get up, I remember Trump's right there, right? Then you get up here off of the East Coast, something out there, right? So they're talking. We got subs coast to coast. Um, good, that's what you really want to see. But again, Takamo Bird, let's get into this. Back to our main. All right, let's break into some of the news, and then we'll start looking at some of the other aspects of this. Um, well, first off, let's go TFRs real fast just to show you. We got uh, this one. It looks like a space operations off of the East Coast. This power outages, power outages. We've got a storm coming through, and uh, we've got some severe weather coming across uh, Texas today into the southeast. Um, and then this is your TFR. This is where Flashbang is. We'll see he's returning today. But this is where they've been doing a little hoedown here in St. Croix. Uh, it'd be really interesting to see the flights that have gone in and out of this, out of that airport, who all's down there with them. Um, but a uh, little hoedown there. Um, anyway, all right, that's going to be your radar thing. Let's back this up Get over here to our data. Looking at flashbang. So again, he comes back around 1245 this afternoon, back to the White House. Uh, buckle up, because I think this is, uh, they're going to kick off this year with some crazy stuff, all right? Here's kind of a breakdown of the taxes that take effect. Flashbang is, uh, look at this, 6.5 billion natural gas tax, uh, which will increase household energy bills, uh, 12 billion crude oil tax, so they're taxing, taxing energy. That's not good, all right? Um, that's really bad, actually. Taxing coal. I mean, these are like, you're talking billions in dollars in taxes here. Uh, and then here's one. Taxing your 401ks, man. They're bleeding you down. So uh, your cost of goods are going up. There ain't no doubt about it. We've already seen the increase. Uh, if they're taxing this stuff, imagine what it's going to do to Europe and other places because we're exporting a lot of stuff too. And so that right there is going to, it's going to bury the rest of the world with this tax increase. So, all right. And then uh, this one here, 225 billion corporate income tax hike. Yeah. Mercy. Not a good situation. Um, we'll continue to watch it, but this is, uh, this is no bueno for any of our wallets. In the meantime, they're giving away our money into Ukraine. So, all right. Okay. Now let's take a look. We were talking about the Texas DPS thing. I point this out. This is going to be your swift errors. The reason I'm pointing this out, uh, notice you got one that looks to be running from up here in, uh, Wisconsin down to, uh, looks like Cancun. All right. Don't know. Remember, we got a lot of Homeland Security stuff going on up here. We got a lot of uh, air refuelers up here with fighters, things like that. I don't know what's going on there other than maybe they're apprehending people from the north. Uh, but why would they be heading south? Again, don't know. Here's a data point for you, though. I will tell you, when I was talking to Governor Abbott and I mentioned the Swift Air flights, it was a deer in the headlights. Right? Remember, these are Fed moves. Uh, but uh, I could tell that I blindsided him with my comment that he did not know about these. Or if he did, he was surprised that I knew about those. Uh, but it was a very quick uh, guard up, 
like uh, I'm hitting him with data that he didn't know about or data that he knew about and didn't know that I knew about it or that our viewers knew about it. So anyway, remember uh, uh, Customs and Border Patrol, I reached out to their folks and asked them for an official statement on this export of people coming from our borders, and uh, I got no response. So putting that out there, all right? Now check this out. 266,000 migrants apprehended uh, in two months in Texas-based border sectors. So all those areas that we just looked at with Texas DPS running up and down uh, all the way from Brownsville, all the way up to Del Rio, all the way to El Paso across our border, uh, this is uh, what's been coming. Uh, that's in two months. So a quarter of a million in two months. And uh, this is what it's doing to our, our uh, court system. Biden's border cross, uh, crisis. Check this out. Our immigration courts have two million backlogs uh, and it's more than they can handle. Check this out. 8,000 people are waiting for asylum. Uh, not good because you don't know who's coming across our border. Um, and uh, the fact that we're not stopping them, we're letting them in and putting them into our court systems uh, just means they're going to be stamping, rubber stamping everybody and their brother. Uh, and it's going to take them, look at this, typically takes 4.3 years to get through the regular system. Uh, think about it now. These people are going to be on back order for... Uh, or backlog for for yeah, twenty years, man. It's un unbelievable. So, all right, on over to our government spend. Check this out. U.S. Uh, buys nearly four hundred F thirty fives in a thirty billion dollar contract. Notice this. I got to dig in on that. I don't know what that model is. Um, <clears throat> that's the S model. New. Remember, we have an A, a B, and C models to date. So S model, no clue. So I'm gonna have to kick kick the tires ask some questions and just maybe specific to NATO required aircraft, right? Certain capabilities. So, all right, Bit Defender. You can see a uh, little lighter than usual, although I will say we've had some power outages here in Texas, uh, consistent last two days, just uh, popping people off, about a thousand people in my area, uh, but it's kind of spreading throughout. So is it cyber related? I don't know, um, but that has been happening and uh, again, although it is pretty one directionally peppered and still pretty active. So, uh, like I said, though, a little lighter than it has been. Right? Okay, over to four flight. Now, uh, the yellow stuff on here, this is actually turbulence. Uh, and the only reason I'm pointing that out is because I just came back from Hawaii. I was tracking this as I got onto my flight. And I will tell you, the entire flight from the time we got off the ground and leveled off all the way to Los Angeles was a continuous bump. Um, what that means. When you look at this, uh, it goes by percentages based on color. So when you get into the red stuff in here, that is uh, high turbulence. Uh, doesn't mean it's big swings, just means it's very, very turbulent in that area. Um, they typically avoid that. But this yellow chop out here, uh, I will tell you, that's you're talking you know, 100, 150 foot swings in altitude when you're running across that stuff. Uh, and I know because I was on one of the flights, I went back and looked at it because there were a couple bumps where I was like, "Woo, you know, a little stomach drop. Uh, and uh, that's exactly what that was. So just wanted to point that out. Uh, you can see. Uh, so if you're flying today, West Coast, anything heading across the Pacific is pretty choppy. Uh, and then a little bit out here off of the Atlantic. Um, but let's get into the NOTAMs, et cetera. Let me take this uh, turbulent stuff off the map. and uh, And then you can just see. Uh, it looks like we dropped off a lot of mill op stuff, mill in, uh, exercise stuff across the United States. So we'll keep an eye on it. I expect it to pop back up uh, at, at regular numbers, if not more. Um, we do have some stuff going on. That one's off of Halifax. Looks to be an exercise, regular DC stuff. These are danger areas. So we'll look for all that to get reactivated. It is the new year. And then, of course, this is Flashbang and God knows who else down there. Now, this, again, this is a missile track. Looks like that is still active. And then Ukraine went orange. So, um, which means mill exercises, maybe. I don't know. Let's get over and take a look at the Ukraine map right now, though. I will point out a couple things of this. Points of interest. Uh, we've got a troop deployment right there next to an area that just activated. Uh, that's actually a missile system that was knocked something down coming inbound. So it looks like Russia's on the defense. Got a lot of drone attacks up in Kiev, taking out power. Uh, and then, of course, we've got uh, their own launch, missile launch stuff, uh, air defense things. But you can see 
Not as far west as it has been, um, but definitely a lot more red stuff in there, okay? All right, now this is, uh, this is actually a cruise missile just got popped. You see the impact is that black smoke, and then you see that is actually, I think it's, I don't you know, it's one of the Russian cruise missiles that got knocked out. You can see where it was contacted in the black smoke as that thing goes fireballing down to the ground. So uh, very active. Again, they're starting to go on the pro uh, proactive uh, in Ukraine, attacking Russia, that is going to escalate things, all right? So I saw or just read that uh, there was a strike that hit uh, from Ukraine into Russia, killed 53 uh, Russians, uh, Russian soldiers. Uh, and so you do know that'll, that'll definitely get a response coming back, okay? All right, Biggs Army Airfield, as you can see, uh, this is uh, got a priority air transport coming out of Will Rogers. That's an arrival. That is a prison center up there. I believe that's where that's coming out of which leads me back to all of the flights we saw disperse across the United States. I said it made no sense. I'm beginning to wonder if those weren't uh, immigrant, that immigrant camp. Remember, there's a very large immigrant cramp camp at Biggs Army Airfield. I'm wondering if they didn't uh, push people into other cities. Maybe that's what it was. Um, independently, that would have probably been an Abbott move uh, as they, they, orchestrated because remember we looked at the governors of some of these other cities and it was definitely red as well as blue it was a good mix all the way across so could they have been emptying out that camp and now they're putting people in and using it as a prison camp don't know we'll just continue to watch it but the will rogers thing right there uh i do know there is a prison uh a a prison there in oklahoma city uh i've talked to um uh, bureau of prison guys that are retired that confirm that and so that would indicate we got some prisoner movement, potentially. All right. Now, this other one here, notice we got inbound uh, Atlas Air from Houston, and then one rolling out to uh, Fort Hood. So a little bit of troop movement there, more than likely. Anything on schedule? Again, it's going to be light day. Over to Topeka, Kansas. I'm not seeing anything as I go through that catches my eye. That's a helo. Um, so we'll skip through this. Doesn't look like uh, we got a Delta airline coming in. Again, it's a commercial uh, airport too. So nothing there in Topeka. Over to Ramstein, I've got one reach coming from, from uh, County Cary and uh, nothing else on the board. Very light Ramstein day. Again, federal holiday. This is going to be a, a, a sit rep light, so to speak, as we kind of get back into the swing of things. And we get over to Poland as I go through real time with you. I'm not seeing anything catches my eye. Um, yep. Looks like uh, just regular commercial flights inbound right now. Uh, it's KLM, et cetera. Yeah, not seeing anything. Uh, but we will see. I'm sure that'll be an uptick right after the first of the year as troops come back because I'm sure people got, you know, the opportunity to go home. Some of them, not all of them, but I'm sure some, some did go home. I got one Omni flight on the board. Coming out of, uh, looks to be uh, BWI, which is a DC area, right? And uh, Baltimore, Washington into Phoenix, uh, which is interesting. We'll just watch it. That could be troops, could be immigrant related. All right. Last up, Royal Air Force. Only got four flights on the board right now. They look to all be coming outbound down into the southern side. Uh, that is, uh, looks to be on the climb out coming from uh, Cyprus getting airborne. We'll see that one, uh, could be headed, uh, could be headed down into Africa. And this one here, 31,000 feet, uh, it's level. Um, then this one here is coming out of Terra Sierra Island and, um, not showing that though. Although that could be it right there, uh, descending. Okay. Listen, that's going to be our setup for today. I, again, uh, we will be back on track. Um, Wednesday, we'll do our live show with the, with the uh, member community. And uh, good to be back. Uh, I hope you guys had a safe New Year's. And uh, buckle up. I think this is going to be rocky, um, just uh, based on all the indications that we see with our border, with China, and the talk that's going on there, and the Russia side of the house. So, all right, that's it. Stay frosty. Keep that powder dry. We'll talk soon. God bless. Yeah.
Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.